Hello everybody, Rain here. Hopefully I won't have the problems that I did yesterday, but seriously, it is the middle of November and it is hot here. I mean, not like middle of summer hot, but like early fall hot and it's ridiculous. Uh, so I did start recording the audio for this last night and my computer basically froze in the middle of recording the vocals, uh, the audio. So hopefully today will be better. I started early enough in the morning. Hopefully it won't overheat. If it does, I'm just going to put some music to this and we'll just be done with it and I'll salvage what I can of the audio. Anyway, so I decided I wanted to go ahead and play around with platform building, especially since it seems like it'd be really, really good for modern type builds. And I like doing modern type builds. I always have. Um, so basically I'm just playing around with this and I started doing this Tuesday night and realized, oh, hey, maybe I should do a video of doing it and you guys can learn with me what we can do and what we can't do with platforms. It might save you guys a bit of a headache. Uh, that's always good, right? Anyway, so I started with the entranceway. I wanted to do basically platform stairs because that just seemed perfect. Um, it seems like the perfect solution. I did find one thing about the little triangular and um, basically non-square uh, platforms, and I really wish they'd fix it. If I am stretching it like along one of the right angle sides, it ought to just keep making the whole triangle bigger, not just pull out a flat area. And uh, so if anybody's listening, that would be an option. That would be a lovely thing to fix, um, please. Uh, I have a few other things that I would like to say right now about platforms in general before we get started. Um, a lot of real tiny homes use... Um, a lot of real tiny homes use lofts and other things to make the most of the space. And we don't even have bunk beds. And it would be really lovely if we could have at least some of that before we go into... Uh, you know, much further into The Sims because I would really like the ability to go, oh, hey, I have a tiny home, but I can actually have like two, three or four people living there because, you know, I just put the kids in a loft or, or in a set of bunk beds and I can still have a full tiny home, which I would really like to have. Anyway, so that said, we can't go under platforms and you have to be very careful so that the platform doesn't exceed the minimum floor height so that your sim can go onto that platform or it's useless. Um, doesn't mean it's not use. Okay, I shouldn't say useless. It's useless for actually being a floor bit. It's great for adding little weird details, as you'll see. Um, and even then, I think a sim could use that platform area. But, okay. So, here we are building our platform. Um... I do some adjustments here and I found something. Okay, so if you want to adjust a platform, they have to basically be in different rooms. After you're done with everything and you have it the way you want it, you can then go ahead and remove the walls. But you need some way of differentiating it. You can see in the video when I tried when I tried making just making an entire room of it after the fact, it messed everything up and set it to the same level. So you basically have to set everything the way you want it first. And here is where I'm starting to play around with the idea of using a platform as a landing instead of just twisting stairs to make a landing. Because as you will have already known probably by now, if you are messing around with the landing on if you want to make a decent sized landing, like a two, a four by four landing, for instance, you need to have double stairs. That's the only way it's going to happen. So with a platform, you can do it easily. Um, so another little tip thing here. I am adding here at some, uh, I'm adding some more platform stairs, um, going down into the living room area. Um, basically the entire living room, kitchen, um, dining room, etc. area is all lowered. So basically you come in, it's a raised area, there's an entryway, 
there's the stairs up to upstairs and then there's the stairs down into the rest of the house um, I will say right now that this is a great way of giving a house a lot more interest um, I really am happy how this eventually ended up coming out even if there's a few disappointments you'll see so what we're doing right now is okay I'm going to, have to stop for a moment I have to turn on my fan it's getting too warm in here but if I don't at least partially shut the door of my office I will pick up sounds from other places so I will apologize in advance for the fan sounds but I will set it to low there we go that shouldn't be too bad so anyway this is a very much a learning process if you pay attention closely even though it is sped up you will see that there's certain things you don't want to do like that <laughs> you'll lose part of your stairs that you work so hard to do like I said you have obviously I hadn't figured it out from the other part basically you have to treat those as separate rooms and not if you enclose them inside of a larger room you will end up having problems unless you make them a full room with walls first so word to the wise like I said set everything up as separate little rooms um, matter of fact there's some shapes that I try to do later where I learned that you're better off maybe using a custom shape tool I wish I had but as I said I was just playing I was just playing around with the tools and I didn't have a set idea um, just a second obviously since I'm recording I am also talking to the cat so she has come in and um, wants attention so if I'm a little distracted at this point it's because I have a cat in my lap anyway so you that's probably too, too much information so up here I'm working on the bedroom area um, and uh, again like I said I love building modern houses um, there's a few things I might have done a little bit differently in this one um, but it's done it is up on my origin um, gallery look for soggy fox and if you want this house you can have it if you want this house and then you want to completely change everything in it that's fine too um, I just wanted to share because I was pretty happy with how it came out and it's interesting I, I think it came out pretty interesting so anyway parfait estates is the name of the plot the lot um, basically I just thought oh hey layers maybe I'm a little old that's a little uh, obscure for some of you younger people but uh, yeah it was either that or onion estates and you know everybody loves parfaits and Kate um, anyway so here I am doing the setting up the roof now um, again a little bit of fiddling because I didn't want yeah that's the shape I wanted like I said I probably would have been better off just using the, the, the custom shape tool and then removing the walls because I ended up having to use walls in some cases anyway um, but hey they have the platform little pieces in, in here so why not use them um, here I am saying the steps at first I start doing something a little bit too okay I won't say too elegant there's nothing unelegant about modern but it's a different type of elegant like Victorian versus Art Deco um, very clean lines I really wish oh that's something else I'd love to see in the Sims I'd love to see as many Art Deco or um, Art Nouveau type pieces as we see modern because there's a huge amount of modern stuff it seems like every other expansion we get modern pieces and when I say modern I don't mean like 2020 modern or even like 2000s modern I mean mid-century 1950s atomic and mid-century modern pieces we get a lot of those and it would be I mean I'm not complaining because I love the aesthetic of that but I would really love it if we'd actually get something besides that so a request could we have some other cool stuff like art deco would be lovely um, even more Victorian pieces or something might be fun I mean I, I like to play with all kinds of things obviously um, depending on what I'm going for but 
this just seemed to say modern. And I am really looking forward to Snowy Escape. One more day. One more day. Um, yeah, I'm recording this on Thursday. Hopefully I get it up today. Hopefully I get it up before I get the video up for Snowy Escape. But this one, because it is a speedy, speedy build um, video, I'm having to record the audio. And there is actually more editing involved than there is when I just do a play video. Go figure. But I don't think you want to watch me and listen to me talk for two and a half hours doing this not sped up. That's how it took me to build this. Um, oh, and test it. And then make some tweaks because even with a normal build without using move objects, you will have some problems with pathing. That's just, the, that's just how it works. So basically I had to fix the pathing issues. I did. Um, and I did use move objects to uh, get certain things. Speaking of which, in my video that I did Tuesday, uh, I said that, oh hey look, you can do this and write up to each other. I had forgotten one important thing. And that is, oh hey, uh, if you have move objects on, yeah. So you can still put windows over doors, but you have to use move objects to put them right over the door. But it will work. It looks nice. You can do the same thing with um, windows. Basically, if you want windows to be stacked right on top of each other, you will have to use move objects. If you download this lot, you will want to have move objects on before you download it, or things might go a little weird. Um, but still, hey, it works. So anyway, here is me building the rest of this house. Um, I played around with the the new, there's like a bunch of different heights. Basically, I think there is now a half wall, half wall, air quotes, for each level. So you've got one for one step up, two steps up, three steps up, four steps up, so forth. So that you basically have a half wall for every height that you could possibly want, which is cool. I like that. Um, and uh, so now I'm putting in a sunken area. As you can see, I'm playing around with that and I end up having to do some changes to that from my original idea. Like I said, I'm playing right now. So, you know, everything is bound to be a little bit different. Um, I probably could have made the stairs coming down from that first stair actually um, a little bit shorter, like only one square, but hold on. <sighs> Sorry about that. Anyway, so here we are. We're building. Building. Yay. Uh, but I am really looking forward um, to Snowy Escape. When I was in college, I actually took a year's worth of Japanese. So I have a fondness and appreciation for Japanese culture. I, I wouldn't say that I am an anime fanatic. I don't watch that much anime. Hold on. Are you trying to leave? Okay, come on. Okay, let go. Come on. You can leave. Yep. I, I'm not sure what my cat wants. She decided to get on my desk, and that just made everything weird. So, one of the other benefits of platforms is they make really nice modern roofs of different heights and thicknesses. That's really cool. There's only one problem that I have with using a platform for a roof, and that is I like to do skylights, and they won't work so well. I mean, I bet I could make it work. If nothing else, I could put in holes in the platform and put in a roof piece and make it a skylight. But as it is, yeah. But, hey. Don't let me say. Don't let it be said that I don't have a challenge, and I want to do that for the next build I do, or maybe not the next build I do. Depends. 
I am planning on doing some building in Snowy Escape because they gave us some empty, empty lots instead of making us have to just knock down a house that's already there and stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. I am looking forward to the snow stuff because I love snow. Um, I'm just, I'm just super, I'm, I am, I am as hyped for Snowy Escape as I was not for the Batu um, game pack. Because, well, I was slightly more psyched for the Batu game pack until I actually got it and realized that there was like, it, it just hit, it just missed on so many levels and it would have taken very little to make it actually cool. But that's neither here nor there. I have it. I have the Batu building pieces at least, and I have robots even if they only work in Batu. Other than, you know, being ambulatory decorations. Um, so now that we've got the frame of the place built, it is time to work on windows and doors. Um, and I fiddled a lot with this one before I realized. I think this is about where I realized, oh, hey, I need build mode on. Yeah. But, I mean, if you look, even without, even without, um, move, move objects on, you can do a lot of fun things with the new tools. And that is another thing that the Batu expansion pre-patch gave us, is it gave us the ability to stack windows on the wall, and now we can do it with windows and doors. So there's a lot there that we can have fun with, and I'm, I barely have touched on this yet. I'm looking forward to fully exploring it. I mean, maybe I have fully explored it by the end of this video, <laughs> but I don't feel like I have. So, um, anyway, fiddling around with things, trying to come up with something I really like. I just had an idea that that would have looked really cool too. Um... Basically, I was trying to build my own transom sort of surround thing. and It's harder to do with modern, unless it's just already done. We just don't have the right window pieces. They need to give us more window pieces. Like, just, you know, partial pieces that we can mix and match. That would be lovely. Can we have that, please, Maxis? EA, can we? Please, 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 please. Um, but anyway, here I am fiddling around with things, trying to find something that I like. I will say that Eco Lifestyle, for all of the uh, bugs and stuff that still are there, does have some really cool pieces. So it's like, I just, I really do like that expansion, except for the fact that it is very, very hard to do, I mean, even with a, I made a mod, for, oh, maybe that's the reason I was having problems, because I shut off mods for this, and I haven't reactivated them yet, but, sorry, I train of thought, if you haven't figured that one out yet either, so, basically, there's a possibility that, I mean, even with me making a mod to make it easier to keep yourself green once you've gotten there, it seems like it's really hard to stay green. Um, so, I mean, I've been working on that mod for forever now, and I probably should try again and see if I can make it work. Um, if I do, I'll put it up on my site. Or I'll put it up on Mod The Sims. Um, speaking of my sites, though, I do have a Patreon, and I might put it up there, too. And it'll be available for everybody, but... You know, hey, if you want to chip in a dollar or two a month or whatever and become a patron, I will I will figure out what to give you guys in, in, in exchange for being awesome. Maybe just votes on what I do for videos. That would be fun. Um, the Patreon is shared with my other uh, interest, which is I also do real-life um, fine arts and jewelry. So... Um, You'll be sharing space. I'm sharing space with that. I don't see a point in having two different Patreons, um, to be honest. But uh, anyway, um, so um, there's a link to my Patreon, I think, down below. And if not, it's in my about, so you can check it out if you're interested. 
Um, if you're not, that's fine. Hey, just watch the videos and enjoy them. I don't do them to make money. I just do them to share what I find nifty. And uh, so we'll, we'll get that done. Speaking of, I, I kind of wish I had thought to put some of the nifty knitter hanging plants down on the porch um, on this because I think that would have been nice because I was trying to get sort of the you know very geometric build and then throw in some greenery and living things as you'll see as we go along further also that's the other thing that I really like about using these as roofs is I can just use the trim from around and that makes it easier to, you know, trim up pieces even if they're going down. So I expect this to be very useful in the future. Um, but anyway, I think this is about the point where I realized, oh, I don't have a bathroom. So this is going to become a bathroom instead of an extra porch bit. Yep. So right now what I'm using is I'm using the Eco Lifestyles plaster. It's a nice clean plaster. It doesn't have as many colors as I'd like, but it does make everything green. And this is in Evergreen Harbor. It's where the minor mansion was. So it's supposed to be a green neighborhood. So I figured let's just sort of keep it green. Um, just make it modern. And so it's not like a historic building sort of thing. It's yeah. Um, but yeah. Right now we're working on play. We're playing around with doors and windows, uh, just because that you kind of need doors and windows in a house. I mean, at least you need doors so you can get places. And uh, so we're just playing around with that right now. I think at some point very soon I'm going to be moving everything. Um, yeah, playing around with windows. Did I mention I really like the Eco Lifestyle windows? I do. They're awesomes. Um, and because it's sunk in, the windows aren't right there on the thing, which is nice. What I don't understand is why it looks more woody on the top window that I used, even though it's the same color scheme. I can't, all I can think is it's just how the light hits it. And, uh, so, yeah. But it is nice to be able to have sunken living rooms and stuff now without having there be a problem with um, lighting. Because it is, in fact, all part of the house. Um, so, back in the inside. I will say that the windows along the front do end up ending, ending up getting adjusted simply because there were some problems. And it makes me sad. But in the end, I think that it did work out pretty good even without the really cool windows in the front. And it's not like I got rid of them entirely. It's just I had to short, use shorter ones, as you'll see, just because of how room placement. And that is the downside of building the frame of a house and then going in and figuring out, okay, what room is going where. Uh, part of me almost wishes that maybe the next build I build I will do this is do a um, do a build where I start with okay these are my rooms now and adjust them like when I was building this about the only thing I knew for sure was that the living areas were going to be down from the entry and that the little side on the right was going to end up being the actual entryway with, you know, coat racks or whatever. Um, I, would, I tried to put some mail on shelves and it wouldn't let me. So, but there's no custom stuff in here right now. There shouldn't be anyway. There really should not be. I don't think I have my mods on yet. I don't think I've turned my mods on yet. Um, but here I am just playing with bits and pieces, bits and bobs. Um, like I said, I wanted to add the organic plants and, and such to a very geometric build. I like the con I like the contrast. So and so 
yeah, I'm still mm -hmm. fiddling with that area's windows and trying to find something I like. I don't think I ever added another window. Um, but, you know, it's it all comes down to aesthetics. Like, that just struck me as being too cluttered and part of modern is not to be cluttered at least not in the architecture so and now we are going upstairs to do that stuff up there and uh so and i would like to apologize this video is supposed to be done yesterday afternoon like i did the build in the morning and i started working on the the video editing and then like everything went south um, it is a new software program that I'm using, and so there is that, and there is a learning curve. It is a very powerful piece of software, and I was trying very hard to figure out why I couldn't record my audio. <laughs> I'm like, I was doing everything that everything said to do, but apparently I had something on that was causing it not to work. That is now fixed. A big shout out to my lovely, lovely spouse who came in and fixed it for me. Um, his profession is basically um, related to taking software and finding all the bugs in it. So he fixed it for me. Um, you know, it's like hit buttons until it works or breaks. Useful skills, especially with somebody who likes to code as well as create, you know, uh, uh, artistic type things um, so he's he's the person who basically brings me back for the brink of I'm gonna scream my head off um, and it's actually one of his sims that I used for uh, testing this house at the end because like I said you really want to test your builds before you put it out in the wild because I have actually gotten builds that were really cool but some things couldn't be used because of conflict and pathing. And it might have been actually something that if I had had build uh, move objects on, it wouldn't have been a problem, but it was. It looked gorgeous. It wasn't so friendly to use, and I had to fix things to make things use usable, mostly counters. Um, but, I mean, that's the thing. If, if I can learn from something, then that's cool. If you guys can learn from something that's cool too and if it's something I've done that's even better I like to teach people how to do things and basically help prevent you guys from having the same frustrations that I go through so you guys can have different frustrations instead uh, just kidding so the next part here is once I actually get finished putting in the window the last bit of windows which I'm about I'm almost done with um, once I put in the last bit of windows, um, is where we'll start, um, furnishing and doing the art, I think. I think. It might be, it might be almost time for our gazebo, um, or pergola, because it's square-shaped. Um, uh, and that's one of the things I really have missed with The Sims 4, is because you don't have the constrained floor elevation sheet anymore, you can't make the bridges and stuff that I used to make. I mean, if you go back, like, I think Mod the Sims has some of my, my house builds. And if you look, it's like, I built modern. And I built a lot of things with bridges and, like, gazebos and very elegant, like, Tea Party Victorian type stuff. I like that stuff. It's awesome. Anyway, so, I'm building the house. We have it all done. And so, anyway, um, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do the yard first. And I'm just, like I said, I just played around with stuff. I didn't do any, I didn't have any real big plans. Um, I, I will say I did use move objects and stuff, but I tested it afterwards. And the only thing I think that not having move objects on is if you install this house is some of the windows might not show up, so you'll have to actually turn on move objects and um, put that in. So, it works. 
And uh, so now we're going to fence in the yard. I missed where I moved everything, but that's okay. Um, it's not like I'm touching, touching on any tools. That, at this point is when we go, oh, yeah, we need to get rid of the, the, the floor. We don't want the floor. The floor is bad. It needs to go away. Oh, please don't tell me you froze up again on me. I think you have. No, okay. That's what happened in my my second take last night is it just sort of froze on me and then when I re when I tried to save everything it was the previous attempt at a vocal. So there's that. Anyway, another thing like I said with the triangle tool I learned that if you try to expand the size of it, it won't expand the it won't expand everything. So again, this is a case of if you wanted to make a, a larger hexagonal or um, octagonal shape, you would have to do it manually with the, the custom room tool. And so, um, but I didn't think about that when I was doing this. I was just grooving up the music and building. So here is our little our little pergola. Um, which is a fancy, a fancy Italian way of saying, here is our detached porch. Um, don't ask me how I know this stuff. Um, anyway, putting in our roof. Again, another platform. We did a lot with platforms in this, this video, in this build. Um, but get that all set up. And then I originally was going to make this into a place for like a hot tub. And then I decided, you know what, I'd rather just do a little detached eating area um, with a grill. So we've got that nice little lovely thing. And so we got that. Like I said, I apologize if there's any background noise picked up in this recording. Um, I do live with some other people. And I cannot close the door to my office right now because it last time I did that it caused everything to overheat so hopefully we don't get any bleed through but half walls again um, half walls are a nice way of doing a fence in my opinion so I use it in some cases if I want a solid basically fence um, so got that put in and we're putting in our nice little path and uh, then we go back to doing the flooring and everything as I realize everything is still concrete. And when you're trying to go green, you do not want concrete because concrete is apparently industrial. So, yeah. So, we've done the flooring. And so, yeah. Basically, just set everything all nice and pretty. And I put in a little half wall for the bathroom so that, you know, the toilet is off on its own. That's where the toilet's going to go. A part of me almost wishes I had done the bathroom a little bit more square instead of rectangular like I did because then I would have had more room to work. But considering the fact that I've actually made bathrooms that are two tiles work, you know, um, yeah, so get everything set up, I think we're playing around with, yeah, bathroom windows, I thought I was done with all the windows, but I guess I hadn't finished all the windows yet, and, uh, one of the things that I do have a problem with is I really like to use a lot of windows, I think it looks good on the outside, it looks good on the inside, it brings in a lot of natural light, but then there's a problem where there's no walls left that don't have something on them. I had that problem in my real life, even though I have more rooms that don't have external walls and windows, where bookshelves and shelves in general, and then I have no place to put art pieces. But, yeah, first world problems. Um, I think I'm about done here, and hopefully everything is... Um, to this point we'll get to the more interesting furnishing parts and where I fi fi find some of my first issues with um, stuff so um, so yeah put in this the 
hot tub, decide I'm not going to do that. And yeah. And sorry, I had to take a little pause. Basically at this point we're building what will be the final uh, permutation of this area. Um, some places to sit and just sort of enjoy being outside and socialize. And I was going to put the, the grill there, but I thought in real life you don't want to put your grill on the porch because that's a fire hazard. So let's just keep it a little bit away from furniture. And then that gave me room for putting, I thought about picnic table and then decided that we'll just put in a normal table and chairs. Like I said, I did a lot with modern furniture and stuff, so a little bit of permutations and perambulations, but eventually I settled on something that I think turned out really nicely. Um, so we'll see. That's not what I thought I settled on. <laughs> okay, but still, I think it came out really nicely. It's got kind of a little bit more of a... I mean, it's not a not modern sort of look, so... And it's very porch. Uh, and it blends in well with everything else. I, I, whatever it is, I'm happy with it. And then put out an easel on the porch, too. Um, just so that you've got something, you know, creative to do. I tend to do creative sims, so... That's what we ended up doing. I probably could have put like in some musical instruments in various places, but I didn't. Um, but there's still room in the rooms for you to put in stuff that's related to your Sims interests. So I don't feel like that's a real big problem. And at this point we're going to go ahead and start furnishing inside the house. Uh, first thing, I had planned on putting some sort of plants in there. Hadn't decided on what. I start going, you know, trees might be nice. You know, like internal trees. So shrink down the trees, put the trees in the in the spot, and then realize that they go right through the ceiling. And I tried making the trees smaller and decided, no, uh, that's too small. Um, the leaves just... Uh, you can adjust a little bit up both ways. Um, but if you do it too much then your leaves start getting too big or too small to be realistic so uh yeah i do kind of miss the bigger trees of three where you had sometimes the tree would be big and sometimes it'd be small but and have different permutations so it was really easy to do different things um but put some young bamboo in basically that that I think came out looking pretty nice. I played around with some other stuff until I finally settled on what we went with. Um, I could have probably raised up the platform a little bit more and made some other stuff work better, but yeah. And I tried to put some plant, some actual indoor plants in there, and that was kind of a pain in the butt. And then they'd go through. Like I said, I think that if I do something like this again next time, I'll raise it a bit more so that it's still up a bit, and that will make it easier to put stuff in and make it work. So, um, I had to turn move objects on and off, and later on you'll see where there is a problem with that. But, um, anyway, made it work. That's the important thing, right? Is it work? Um, and, uh, so, like I said, fiddle around with some ideas and things, then decided I didn't like how it looked, um, so, there's a lot of me fiddling around with plants here, um, until I finally, like I said, found something I liked, so, we're just gonna sit here and watch me play with plants, um, but, for things like this, you have to have move objects on um, because you can't normally put outdoor plants inside. Um, here, it's like you can't see the plant that I put down from front, you know, full on, but you could see them 
below. Um, and like I said, I just played around with some things like that worked. I, I liked how that worked. Um, using the hedge. And then I'm like, well, since I already have the hedges here, let's go ahead and finish doing the outside landscaping. So we did that. Um, like I said, I wanted to combine a lot of plants and organic stuff. I did not go full hog wild on plants because if I do that, I, I've been known to do that. There's a cast screen that proves that I've been known to do that for Sims 2. Over on Mod the Sims, um, my handle there is Rain. Go figure. Um, and I do have some mods there that are for Sims 4 that are coding mods, not um, items. So I haven't really done anything with items because it's like. I don't know. I could make items. It's not like I don't know how to mesh things and texture them and all that kind of stuff. And I've thought about doing some changes to the beds where basically you have the bed frames and the beds, the mattress sheet set separate so that you could actually mix and match things because it's like I would like to have things that match, but like for instance, you'll see in the bedroom later. I am not a fan of orange. I'm not really a huge fan of yellows and such. It's like I don't mind them in the right things, but I'm not big on them for clothing or bedspreads or something like that. But I love blues and teals and greens. And one of the problems that I was having later on with the bedroom is the look that I wanted for my dressers and stuff, if I wanted to have the bed match, I had to have an orange. I, I, I finally fixed my problem. I can tolerate yellow more than I can tolerate orange, so I made that work. And uh, so, picking back up again, hopefully this will work. I uh, had some freezing issues. I do have an older laptop. Anyway, so we are now working on the kitchen now. We are now working on the kitchen. That's redundant. Um, putting down stuff, playing around with placement. Uh, I decided I didn't like this placement and everything's going to be rearranged in just a minute as you will see. And uh, so basically one of the first things I realized was is that my really cool windows weren't going to work. They were too... I, I didn't want to put counters right up against windows, especially not these kinds of windows. It just wouldn't look right. So we'll go to a shorter window. I kept the one for placement, um, and uh, so there we go. And uh, it does prevent me from being able to put in overhead counters, but that's okay. I can live with that. Um, but we're going to we're we're now to the point of a lot of the stuff that I'm putting down has color, um, simply because I think the color really helps. You really kind of want some color um, when working with whites and blacks just so that everything, the color makes everything pop, in my opinion. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm just putting down stuff right now that I'm immediately going to go, yeah, this is not the best use of space. Let's rearrange this. And then this is one of the areas where I have to go in after my testing and I will have to fix some things. Um, so, I, I, I was uh, yesterday years old when I f figured out that, oh, hey, uh, Sims won't cook on the diagonal, apparently. So, anyway, that is fixed um, later. Just, you know, for the record. Um, I'm not sure exactly... I think I still wanted to do the, the island thing, and I decided it didn't work. I really wish I had an island in my kitchen in, in real life. Um, I will go ahead and say that a lot of the things that I build in The Sims seem to be based on um, and uh, on dreams. You know, this is what I wish I had. Uh, but... Uh, it, in 
the other problem with diagonals these things don't always fit in there real good and see if you can spot something else that I had to fix later on when I started testing it because I didn't notice it right away bonus points if you figure it out and the thing is this is about the point where I'm like going you know what let's just go ahead and pull up the Cosmolex which is apparently the term now used for mid-century modern plus atomic era type decor um, I think I found that out accidentally I'm like what's Cosmolex that sounds that sounds like fun and uh, but yeah we we needed our dining table um, I decided I did not want I wanted everything to be comfortable yeah that's where I actually put a chair too close um, and one of the things that I like to do with things that are supposed to be lived in is I will put in I will use the alt key just to make things rotate freely instead of on angles you know like 45 degree angles and uh, so I have I have lived in many houses over my my many years on this planet and I tell you something right now that uh, that nothing is perfectly symmetrical like that when people are literally living there so like I said I really do like blues I did use that rug even though it's got oranges and stuff in it just because I think that it sort of makes the blues stand out more I like how it came out um, and uh, so yeah we're just furnishing now this is the fun part right uh, um, and I wanted to use those because when I was growing up and even in my house now that basic style of side table but that's too big for a side table so I didn't end up using it um, I wish they'd make a side table design like that because I seen that designed very commonly as side tables never as a coffee table um, I'm not saying that you can't there's where I was trying to resize it I'm like going you know what then things are gonna just be put down on it and they're probably gonna float so I just played around with it a little bit and then um, put in that coffee table because that's still very 50s 60s um, atomic and then I was playing around with wood and you know I realized I should have kept it the, the kind of creamy color but eh whatever and of course you know let's put in an old-fashioned uh, cabinet stereo um, I love those I wish I had one still I grew up with the, that kind of stuff um, and then here is me trying to find and I think I found it a different way but you know all this atomic stuff um, I was looking for the shelves with the TV you know the entertainment shelves built in I think what I ended up just doing is going tiny living I know they have it that's where it is um, I don't tend to use the search functions unless I can't find it but it's gotten to the point where there's so much stuff and that point I decided to sort of make it look like it was straddling the platforms instead of standing on the ground directly um, more for space so but it does work I did test everything like I said you'll see that in the video um, but um, notice what else is missing from this kitchen at this point that I didn't realize until I started doing the thing testing see what I mean about you can't put in this the overhead cabinets because the windows which you know that's okay um since it's the sims it's not necessary if it was a real house i'd want them because every little bit of storage is you know and that's where i'm trying to get rid of the it just didn't want to get rid of so we actually technically have two rooms for the one little area um but basically this is me playing hopefully you are enjoying watching me playing hopefully we will not have any more technical difficulties with me trying to share this with you um, so get that set up um, I think there's a few more tweaks and stuff that I want to do I think I tried to get rid of it that way 
it didn't work um, so anyway it is on the same level it worked and uh, so I think I just go whatever and I start putting more things down so one yeah really kind of want that I think I tried different places where it's like where would this be tucked out of the way but still be accessible and I'm like going yeah no no wait did I put that there I guess I did I thought I'd put it down the the entry hall but I know I did put some stuff in the little entry hall um, but yeah this is this is uh, my strange way of building things so want to have an umbrella because you know umbrellas and this is one of the ones where I ended up with going more 70 sort of aesthetic for the the coat the entryway and coat rack and place to sit down while you put on your outdoor shoes and stuff that the sims ever use it for that but it, it, it looks good right and I'm putting in some lighting I decided that was too blinding what did I put in oh yeah those I like those those are pretty nice and then I use another one uh, one of the advantages to me for using move objects even if you're not actually overlapping things with it is it does allow you to put down do do what I'm about to do right now which is um, put down the piece of art and then adjust the lights around it uh, where is that piece of art it's like I want a piece that's too big but see what I did here it's like I put down my art and then I just adjusted the lights around it manually and then I'm going to put in a shelf here because that would just be um, useful and uh, then I found out that there's not a whole lot I can put on the shelf there we go it's technically overlapping shelves but it doesn't seem to matter too much and it doesn't it doesn't have that weird kind of clipping issue thing going on for it so let's just do it and this is where I found out you can't put mail on the shelves I'm like but that's the whole point of that I have a shelf like that in my house it's not as big but it's like I couldn't find anything I could put on that shelf so I think this is about when I go let me use some of the hidden objects because it's like uh, nothing will fit that I want to put here so I think I even tried some of the little plants and it's just <sighs> come on but we'll get this taken care of I do see one thing that bothers my my OCD tendencies and that's the stair clipping in the wall but I just don't see any way of getting around that outside of pulling that out a bit more which there's enough room for it I could do it make it a square planner area instead of but I don't want to take that up because like that would be a good place to put stuff so anyway I decided to give my sims some awards for this house um, and uh, I think I found out that while the music award would fit there the uh, other award won't so I put some other stuff in like some snow globes I'm a goth you have to have something gothy in a goth house even if it's a modern goth house so and then I thought about putting down some eggs or some skulls or and decided on crystals because crystals shiny the big ones won't fit on there either and I kind of wonder if part of that might just be because it's on a diagonal I don't know so we've got that set up I'll have to play around with that one th that one to answer that question at some other point I think I'm like going you know what this is pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with it let's go ahead and do the bedroom and the bathroom um, and finish decorating the, the bare spaces into something nice so um, and this is where we start having that problem I was telling you about like there's a really nice bed I'm like well, that one's kind of modern and then I decide you know what let's go back to actually that one's a little bit more art deco and it's in its its aesthetics and this one's so 50s mid-century 
I'm like that one's not but this one this one is so it and I'm like I like that I like the bed stuff and then I started doing the dressers and and stuff so it's like um And then it's just me trying to match the wood, get that all set up. So basically this is just, oh, hey, I do not need another clock. I do not need another one of those clocks. That's the kind of thing you have one of. Um, but it's about this point I'm like going, but I really would like the dressers to have fun blue bits. I mean, you know, and yeah, I know you don't really need more than one dresser. And I put in two. I mean, not for the Sims. In real life, you might. And this is basically going, well, I kind of like that, and I like that. And, but to match that is that, and, uh... That is such a very bright orange, so that's very... I mean, it's it's appropriate for the style. And then, you know, kind of like that one, too. I'm like, you know, let's see... Eh, I can live with that. And then I realized, oh, hey, I should probably make that one match, too. And it's like, you know, need some lights. And I decided, here's the thing, lava lamps are not mid-century. But I guess as as the time goes on, what is considered part of that general aesthetic is expanded. So, and I tried to close off show hidden objects, and I just couldn't turn it back off. So, um, we'll have that for the rest of this video. I don't think I used anything else that required that. I'm just, you know, again, putting in some clutter. And here's another place where move objects is useful. I didn't want that on one side. I wanted it in the middle. So, here's what you can do. I know that this dresser is the exact height that I want. So I put down another one. And then I just moved it where I wanted it. There we go. And there's two slots where Sims can put stuff. And then you're going, why is my, my Sim unhappy? Oh, because they put a plate of food there or whatever. And just adding a little bit of clutter. I'm glad that they finally realized, I think, in Sims 3 that, you know, we, we want clutter. Thank you. So, I did that. Um, I tend to also play bookworm Sims. I think I was playing around with adding some curtains. Just, just, just things to make it seem more homey. Um, and that's where I noticed that when I turned off uh that it messed up one of my windows um, and then there's that there we go you just overlap it like that yay so I think oh yeah I was trying to, I, I don't tend to put, do much with this stuff, usually. So I'm trying to be more, you know, use this stuff a bit more. And, well, you know, air conditioning is very important, especially when it's November and it's still in the 80s and it shouldn't be. And then I was thinking, oh, living roof, I'll have water gathering and, you know, whatever. And, yeah, it's not there either. Um... But yeah, it's not an efficient use of space, but it's a, it, it's it's a nice home. It's a nice home for somebody who's like a couple. Um, 